Hello and welcome to a new episode of the SurvivalSchule.at. My name is Mike and because I had many, many, many requests on this military backpack system, we're now gonna go over the details and which contents I have inside. So stay tuned. Well, in my last video, I've done a comparison between the military backpack system versus the standard hiking pack. My pack of choice would be definitely one of those systems because you can personalize all the stuff and all the contents and carry easy all your stuff you need into the woods when you go hiking, when you go shopping, even when you drive around with your car. If you have one of these backpacks in your car you're good to go. Today I want to make some special videos. The first one is on request on the military backpack system and I want to go over the contents I have inside. This pack is now built for I would say 48 to 72 hours like a get home bag. But because of my skills in survival, because of my skills in wild edibles, because of my skills in hunting, trapping and also tracking animals, it's not just a 72 hour backpack or get home bag. For me this setup as it is right now is a bug out bag for one person. So you have, if you have family let's say a child, a wife, even two childs or more you may want to get a bigger bag because you have to take care of your whole family and not just a few. This bag is now built for I would say bugging out and bugging out will be one of the next videos as well as prepping. I also will do a video about prepping which you can see very soon on my channel. But now let's talk about the contents. Some of those contents you have already seen in my last video. I've changed something but I've also extended the kit I have inside and now it's really set up as a bug, in, bug out bag or let's say get home back. Doesn't matter if you want to bug in out or stay put. This bag as it is set up now has all the contents I need for a long term bug out scenario. But let's take a closer look at the inside of the pack. As you have seen in my previous video the pack itself has some mullet pouches attached to it which has a purpose and the purpose is that everything is right at hand when I need it and I always know where this stuff is never have to look around and search for the uh, stuff I need in the main pouch or in the main pocket I know all my essentials all my essential gear is right there I would say it's easier to understand the whole system if I start with the outside pouches and then let's take a look inside the pack what I have in there. So the very first pouch I want to show you is this on the side here. This pouch is my water bottle slash cooking pouch. Well, I have a clean canteen bottle in there, stainless steel, which I can use on the fire. Make sure the lid is off because this will get burned or melt. Even the rubber seal will get damaged if you put it on the fire. So just put the bottle alone into the fire. A bandana and a titanium cup. 
The bandana itself has two purposes. One of them is it holds the bottle in place without rattling. The next purpose of the bandana is that I can pull it over my cup, pull the whole thing in a stream and strain the water through the bandana to filter out the big dirt or yeah, all the debris in it. You can also use the bandana to put it over the bottle and get this, this one in the stream filter out all the nasty stuff, the dirt, all the stuff you don't want to have in your water. Afterwards you can take this, put it right to the fire, let it boil up and you're good to go. One thing I have also done with this this one is a Snowpeak 540 titanium cup, which is very, very lightweight, has some folding handles, weighs nearly nothing, and was around 25 euros or 25 to 30 bucks US. But what I've done here, maybe hopefully the camera will pick it up, I have done some scratch marks at the inside, down there. There you have it, right there. That's a special mark and I explain later for which, which purpose this mark has. But that's the outside pocket which contains my water bottle, a bandana, and of course a cup. There you have it. And all this fits nicely and very easy, comfortably, without struggling around, right in the pocket there. This pocket also contains a small pocket on the outside where I've put my fire steel, just a regular light my fire fire steel, the army model. And this is an old one, it's used quite a bit, but it fits there nicely and won't fall out because of this rubber band on the side. The pouch itself closes by velcro, but you have also this clasp to hold it in place. That's the water and cooking device. On the other hand, you've seen it in the video before, I have a double pistol magazine pouch and in one I've put a Victorinox knife. This happens to be the model Forester, which has a great saw on it and a locking plate. And on the other hand, as you have seen in the video before, a multi-tool and the bits for the Letterman. It's the Letterman wave and the tool bits, which is an accessoire for the Letterman. This is just a dump pouch, as you have seen in my previous video. If you've not watched it, please take a look. I've shown this uh, and the concept idea of the whole backpack in the previous video. And that's the big pouch on top. That's the pouch where all my right at hand needed essential stuff is. It has an outside zipper pocket. And in there, I keep some plasters. You never know when you need some plasters and water purification tablets. That's all that is in the outside zipper pocket. The main compartment has a heavy duty garbage bag, some fat wood 
packed in this small tiny little Ziploc bag. And this is stored nicely in the lid part which has mesh, mesh fiber and a rubber band on top so that everything is nice and compact and right there when I need it. This trash bag can give me shelter, this trash bag can give me a poncho if I cut a hole in it. With this trash bag I can collect uh, wild edibles, I can collect water, transport it and many many other uses. Uh, in autumn I can put a bunch of leaves in there. Even in summertime I can put debris and leaves and stuff in, crawl inside and I have a sleeping bag. Or if I cut two sides open I have a big tarp I would say. On the inside pocket you can see with these rubber bands all in together I have a small but very useful first aid kit. This is again for one person, just a one person first aid kit, which includes also some painkiller, painkiller tablets and wound dressing, plasters, all this stuff you need once you get injured. And on the side I have a flashlight, very strong flashlight, which is a Phoenix E21. And this one here. This is a waterproof container and this waterproof container contains um, a powder and this powder is for drinking which is an electrolyte drinking powder. I can easily put it in my water bottle and get energy bag, a uh, vital minerals bag in my body so I can keep on moving. And that's all I have in this outside pouch here. And this pouch is a, I think it's called Tasmanian Tiger Tactical Pouch 5 because it's 5 inches by 4 inches. The good thing about this pouch is that it has a zipper on the back and this zipper, once I have opened it, gives free this cover and this I can easily pull over the whole bag. Of course just the, the small one but it will waterproof all the content that is inside, especially my first aid kit. And it's easily put away by simply tuck it in back into the pocket. Okay, what else is on the outside? On the outside I have put this small single pouch magazine holding stuff uh, on my shoulder strap because when I wear the, the backpack and I'm on the ground or let's say it's middle of the night or the evening and I drop my keys, whatever this is easily pulled out and in there I have a high-end flashlight which is the LED Lancer F1 this has 400 lumens you see how small it is. Also has a glass breaking ring. You can see these ridges there, which can be used to smash glass. This is hardened steel and the whole lamp is constructed to be crash resistant and also waterproof uh, down to two and a half meters. But 400 lumens are amazing, you know. This is awesome. And you have different modes. You have 400, you have low light output, and you have a strobe, which is good for disorienting people even on the day, but better in the night. Very lightweight lamp very easy to carry but very high-end and very good quality. This sheath here is not from Tasmanian Tiger, this is the Maxpedition single pouch or single sheath pouch and it fits very nicely 
on the shoulder strap itself. Also the pack has a chest strap which includes a small whistle. It's very loud, so great to have with you. But now let's take a look at the inside of the pack and I explain you why this cup has the small mark on the inside. So stay tuned. Okay, let's take a look at the inside of the backpack. Just one thing before, this is a very small pack. It has around 6 to 8 liters capacity, so not that much. But once you have put some additional pouches on the outside, you have all you need for a good, sturdy get home bag, bug out bag, whatever. But let's take a look at the inside. On the inside I have not that much equipment stuffed in. It's quite roomy and there is space here where I can put spare clothing or if I get too hot I can get my pullover in. So that's a nice thing to have. The first thing I have in the inside is this pouch here. This is from the company called Blackhawk. And this is an organization pocket where I keep some writing instruments, some pens, tactical pens like the tops, a Fisher Space Pen and a Diplomat um, pen which has also a Fisher mine inside. On the back I have my ID and on the left side I have a write in the rain notebook where I can write stuff down or in this case I write some information on the video contents I want to make and all this stuff right into this book. So nice thing to have. Let me reset the camera for you. I think it's a bit better now. So again, the organization pocket, great to have. Very small, you can fit it in the cargo pocket of your pants. But you have something to write on, even if it happens to be the, your last will. You can do so. Also in this pack I have a trusty knife. And on the knife itself you have a fire steel. And a small pouch. And of course a whistle, so good stuff, good package, very trusty friend, this knife. Next thing I have in my backpack is this one and this is just a multicam hat, I love this one, it's from the company Truce Pack. Great stuff, I've used it a lot and you have seen it in quite a lot of videos. And inside this head there is a small pocket and normally I put a spare bandana in there. So if it's cold this keeps me warm, if it's hot I can wet on this bandana and this keeps my head cool. For sun, for windy conditions, for rain, I have always a head with me. Folds up very compact, very sturdy head and great to have with you. Also in this pack I have a box which is a bomb proof box. Oh, there's a tick. Go away. Um, a bomb proof box. This is a water resistant box 
of all the proof box it's sturdy so you can throw it around and nothing will hurt the contents and this is from 511 and this 511 box contains once you unscrew this four spare batteries for my 400 lumen flashlight so great to have with you in a bugger situation you need stuff that is robust stuff that is bomb proof stuff that you can rely on because you are in trouble once you have to bug out or get home and your equipment shouldn't fail on you would be big big problem on the next hand this is a Maxpedition M1 waste pouch and in there I don't have that much stuff just a little bit and it's all in the main compartment in there I have a small survival kit some string for snaring or even building shelters some wire for snaring or shelter building some sharpening tools for the knife a very small fishing kit and that's it nothing more in this pouch you can see just string fishing kit small survival kit and sharpening tools I would say last ditch stuff or when it comes to snaring trapping I just can put this on my belt go outside and snare stuff trap stuff good to have a small pack with you two things left in this bag one hand tactical very robust gloves which gives me nice grip those are from 511 as well have very good grippy gloves when you have to go through urban environment you need gloves when you when it comes to firewood collecting working with this stuff shelter building you need gloves and why you need gloves I will explain in the bugging out video which is coming very soon so pair of gloves and last but not least two of those yes two packs of instant meal why well one pack gives me around 500 calories this is a beef and potato hot pot mmm yummy I really like this stuff it tastes not not bad it is good in my my personal opinion I really like this it's really yummy stuff you want to try this sometime this and that's the point why I have put a mark on my titanium cup at the inside this it's easy to make you can do it in two ways one you can get this bag open by simply get rid of the top part and pour some water in boiling water of course and put this bag aside wait for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and you can eat right out of this pack itself but you can also and that's why I have put a mark on it I can half or yeah get just half of this pack out this is designed for putting 450 milliliters of boiling water in this pack the mark I've done is exactly the half so half a cup because the cup itself is 450 450 
milliliters. So half a cup and half of this pack. And this constellation gives me four meals because I have two of these packages. First half, second half and the same on the other pack. So four complete meals which are not that high in calories because it, the whole pack is just around 500 calories. But I tell you what, if I have to go and move even a small cup of hot meal keeps me going and keeps me going fast and very far in distance. So I have, let's say, one for breakfast, one half for breakfast, one half in the evening and also on the next day I can start or I can ration it. That's also possible. So I can put, let's say, not just a half, but I can quarter it down. Quarter it, take a quarter cup and I have eight meals. This is not to get you full blown up from all this eating stuff, no. This is just to keep you going, to keep you on the feet for, let's say, 72 hours. The human body is designed to stay alive for quite a time without food. But with food, it's even longer. And that's the point. In this long period of time, I can trap, I can snare, I can hunt. I can even collect wild edibles, but if I don't get any game, don't get any wild edibles, I have also this as a spare in my backpack, two of those packs, very slim, very compact, doesn't weigh that much, but good to go. The bag is empty, that's it. Well, I hope you liked this video, see you soon in the next one. Mike from the survival Schule.at. Stay tuned. Bye.